Yo, this is Deontay DeBron from a while, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And I'd like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow from Sports TV. Bomb Squad, baby. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hell Blaze, at TheHellBlaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code GOODFELLA1BOXING. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfella since you get 18% off. We out. All right, let's talk about the Charlo twins. Uh, does Jamil and Jamal deserve respect? Did they get their validation this past Saturday? Also, who could they fight next? And also, we're going to talk about the Jason Rosario situation where he fell asleep in the corner between the 7th and 8th round right before the knockout. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. I'm pretty sure everybody want to hear my thoughts on the Rosario thing first. So let's start off there. Rosario did nod off for a second and woke back up. People saying that his corner um, didn't protect him. Stephen Bredman kind of brought it up. And then somebody else caught, uh, got the video on Twitter. And I'll leave that link in the description on the source link if you want to see the video. I don't want to get no copyrights. And what I think about it is... You fools can't have it y'all way. When when Wilder, when Breland stopped it for Wilder, everybody was like, oh, Breland stopped it premature. Let Wilder go out on his shield. Wilder was saying that he had died for this. And, you know, he motherfucker got kids. You know what I'm saying? That man got kids. Kids. You talking about I die in the ring? That's, that's bull job talk. So, you know, for people saying, oh, Breland should have let Wilder go on. And then those same, some of those same people saying, oh, Rosario Corner didn't care about him. No, nah, y'all got to keep that same energy. This is a unification fight. All right, this is a unification fight. I feel that, you know, personally, if that's me and I see my 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 uh, my my fighter nodding off, I'm stopping the fight. I'm not even asking, are you okay? If I see you nod off and you go like this and, and then go like go like that, I'm calling the fight. He can fire me, be mad at me, but 20, 30 years down the line, he's gonna be glad that I did so. And I and I and I keep the same, I keep the same, you know, opinion no matter what the fighter is. I said it about Wilder. I said, you know, if Wilder really saying that Fury had something in his fist or he was cheating or whatever was going on, Breland saved your life. He put years on your life by stopping that fight. You wasn't gonna win that fight. In the first round, you hit him with two of your biggest right hands. And he rolled him, he ate him. Right then and there, I knew your ass was grass. What Gucci say? I'm the llama man in your ass is grass. Knew it there, so, you know, Rosario Corner should have cared about him. I remember when, uh, flashback, I remember Diego Corrales' father, stepfather stopped it when he was fighting Floyd. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, personally, I would have stopped it then. But, hey, at the end of the day, he got knocked out, and people want to say, oh, that punch was fake. Like I said, he was breathing. He, Nate said he was breathing in, got caught, but it wasn't even that. It probably was more to the jab to the head than the punch to the body. He didn't have nothing left. He probably suffered a concussion. You know, because you snot off and then wake up. No, you suffer. You you suffered a concussion or some head trauma. So I think the damage was already done. I think in the sixth round he got dropped. In the seventh, he kind of. You know, made it through. I just think the damage was done when he knocked him down the second time in the sixth round, I believe it was. So, you know, I don't really have no hard opinion on it. My opinion is the same. I would have stopped it. If that was me, I would have wanted my corner to stop it. And he had no chance to win. So, like I said, he was really done in the sixth round. In the seventh, he did a great job of acting and, and posturing. And, you know, and Jamel came out and landed that jab to the head, jab to the body. And people said, oh, it was fake. It was fake. <laughs> I mean, you better watch that fight again. I just let me know how many people pay to, uh, can pay attention to detail. That man was sleeping in the corner. That fight should have been stopped. It should have been a seventh round TKO. But let's move on. Let's start off with Big Charlo. Jamal Charlo. All right? Let me show you something. Jamal Charlo is the... Uh, I'm pissing Jamal off. Jamal Charlo is the Doberman. And Jamal is a Chihuahua Mini Penetrator. So this is Jamil right here. Look, Mason, this is Jamil. The Doberman, the big Doberman or Rock Roller. That's Jamal. But let's talk about Big Charlo first. Let them lay on their doggy bed. Um, you know, I, I think he's the best middleweight in the world. I said it. People say, well, well, you know, he 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 ducked Demetrius Andrade and, and Canelo. And, and like, look here, man. If you can't separate your hatred for a fighter, from being from your real opinion or being objective, like I don't even want to talk to you. 
I'm tired of the top rank flunkies and the PBC flunkies and the and the zone flunkies. Like I give credit regardless. He the best middleweight in the world. I seen the improvement from the Hogan fight to this fight. He's a complete fighter. Can Demetrius Andrade beat him? Yeah, I still think that's a 50-50 fight. I said that. We were talking about that fight last time. Did he duck him? Yeah, he ducked him. I mean, they said Marvin Hagler didn't want to fight Mike McCullum. Floyd ducked a lot of people. Almost every fighter ducks somebody. That's just that's just the reality. That's just the reality of boxing. Nobody's perfect. Business or I don't want to fight you, whatever it may be. But Triple G ducked him. You know what I'm saying? Canelo ducked his younger brother when Golden Boy promised him the uh, the fight, and they gave James Kirkland the fight. And the rumor goes that they told George Kirkland he couldn't have Ann Wolf in the corner. So I mean, come on, man. So, I mean, Canelo ducked a lot of people, and he put asterisks by a lot of, a lot of people's name. But people act like Canelo is like unbeatable. Let me start off there. Canelo ain't fought no young prime fighter ever. Without I mean, he fight old people, and if he do fight somebody young, he got the drain now, or he got to blow up a bud him like Amir Khan. So. Amir Khan was piecing Canelo up. He didn't ever want to fight Jamil. He never wanted to fight Jamal. You know, so I'm, I'm not saying I, I felt that Canelo would probably win because of his advantages. And I ain't talking about speed, jab, and counter punching. His advantages is he got a big network behind him. He got Golden Boy behind him. He got the officials behind him. He benefit from everything around him. In a perfect world, if everything was even, Canelo would have three or four losses on his resume. You know, he'd have, he I'd had a draw versus Lara. Back in the day, I heard he lost versus Miguel Vasquez. You know, some people thought he lost to one of those Triple G fights, both of them. Some people think, I thought he won the second one. I ain't had no problem giving him the first one. Some people thought the Cotto fight was too close for, for, for their liking. So Canelo ain't unbeatable. It's just that everything behind him and the push he get, that's the difference. But I wouldn't put it past him. Jamal, big, strong, patient. You know what I'm saying? And some people think that Danny Jacobs fight was close. I just think he, I mean, I think Demetrius can beat him. But like Nate Campbell said, he told Demetrius to his face. He said, you can box, but can you fight? And can Demetrius take it on the chops? He said he got dropped by Von. It happens. I think their feet, they feet was tangled up. He stepped on his foot or whatever it may be. But, you know, in my opinion, I do think he the best middleweight in the world. Demetrius is not active. They won't even let him fight Canelo or Billy Joe Saunders. So, like I said, I got to give it to him. But he fought Demetrius. I think he can go either way. Question is, can Demetrius be perfect for 12 rounds? And can he take Charlo punch? We know Charlo can punch. We know Charlo can box. We know Charlo can bang. We know Charlo got the better jab. We know Charlo can go 12 strong. I mean, you know, he should make it his, his hit list revenge. All them East Coast dudes that was talking bad about him. You know, all them dudes that were saying he was on that stuff and all that, from Jacobs to Andrade to, you know, Andre Rozier, who was training Sergey Dubrachenko, he should he should make them eat their words, you know. But personally, I would like to see him fight, uh, you know, Danny Jacobs next. If Danny Jacobs can come back down, if not, to be honest, Demetrius Andrade to fight to make, but they got to have fans in attendance to do that. So, you know, if in a perfect world, I would like to see him text Danny Jacobs. Then go after Demetrius Andrade. Then move up and fight David Benavidez. He's going to beat his ass right now. He's he not that good right now. And then fight Caleb Plant. I think that fight can go his way too. I think he's naturally bigger than Caleb Plant. So that kind of thing I want him to do. And then when Canelo ready to do it, they can do it at 68. So um, we know Golovkin not going to fight him. I don't care to see Eubanks get go, go to sleep. He will knock, He should knock Eubanks out. You know. So that's what I want to see from Jamal. You know what I'm saying? Um but I do think he's the best middleweight right now. Would I like to see him unify? Yeah, but we know Triple G not going to unify. And him and Demetrius Andrade need to come to an understanding. But the problem also fighting Demetrius Andrade as well is Andrade can't take his power. If Andrade could take his power is a question. And then another question uh, people need to be asking as well, can he get over the Southpaw Jinx? Because he has some trouble with Cora Bob. He has some trouble with Austin Trout. And people say, well, he, he still got core bar problems. He still got core bar problems. I'm like, so everybody got a questionable fight. You know what I'm saying? You go back and you look in, in history, you know, Floyd has some issues with Castillo, with Madonna. You know, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard obviously had his issues with Duran. You know, Mike McCullum, he was older, gave James Tony a tough fight. You know, we, you know, some people just got your number. Montel Griffin gave Roy Jones a tough first fight. 
Some people just got your number. You know, people expect you to be perfect 365, 24-7. And people got to understand when it's an 8, 10, 12-week camp, 6-week camp, if you're on short, you're going to have bad nights. Just can you win? Can you win? Can you overcome those bad nights? Can you do just enough? Can you will yourself to win those bad fights is, is the question. And people act like you're supposed to be perfect. What about all the times Canelo? Canelo lost every round to an old man named Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> he needed help for open scoring to beat uh, 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 Austin Trout. You know, everybody have a bad night. Tank had a bad night versus Gamboa. But you know what's funny about it? These guys pick and choose when they want to, you know, nitpick and critique certain fighters. And this is why I don't like kind of, this is why I don't like discussing fight, boxing with, with motherfucking regular people who don't know nothing. Yo, know, motherfuckers get mad and got a, because motherfucker got a pain. Well, you Charlo ain't that good, and I don't like the Charlo twin. Look here, man, I don't care if you like him or not. Get credit where credit is due. Arab, all these dudes is emotionally attached. Oh, Derbachenko's going to beat him. You ain't seen, you ain't seen nobody say nothing. He watched that boy. He didn't lose nothing but like two rounds in my opinion. He watched him. And people want to show a clip of him getting touched up by Derbach. That was an anomaly. You got a whole fight of him going upside Derbachenko head. Look at Derbachenko face. It's falling apart like a deformed Mr. Potato Head. So you got to give Jamal credit where Jamal is due. I think he's the best middleweight. Um, you know, if he fight Demetrius Andrade, he's just more proven than Andrade. He can box and he can bang. We know Demetrius can box and he bang. Can he get past the stick? We ain't never seen him fight nobody on Charlo level. You know, and then when we don't know, when we when we not sure what's going on, I tend to go through with the experienced fighter. And right now, Jamal may be two years younger, but he got better experience. He done fought J Rock, Trout. You know, he done fought the better level of opposition. And you got to remember, people talking about Charlo fight Matt Corbob, Demetrius Andrade ducked Matt Corbob. Most of y'all probably don't even know that. And he was the WBO champion at 154. Peter Quillen dropped his belt not to fight Matt Corbob over some Al Heyman and you know Jay Z beef. So, you know, when they won the purse bid at Rock Nation, Peter Quillen dropped his belt and went to go do real estate. And um, they offered Demetrius Andrade to be the super champion and jump up and fight Matt, Matt Corbyn for the 160 WBO belt. He said it wasn't enough money in there. So he passed up an opportunity. Andy Lee knocked Matt Corbyn out. You know, then he, I think he had a draw with Peter Quillen. I can't remember how Andy Lee lost that belt. He lost to somebody. Uh, I can't remember how he lost that WBO belt, to be honest, because he had a draw with Peter Quillen, and I can't remember how Matt Andy Lee lost that belt. That's a great question. I'm trying to think. I think Jermaine Taylor held it. Maybe Jermaine Taylor got a hand of it from Sam Solomon. Can't really remember how that how that went, though, but let's talk about Jamil Charlo. Uh, Jamil Charlo is out here doing his thing. Uh, did it, had a great fight. I thought Cor I thought of Corby. I thought Jason Rosario was dominating the fight, other than the knockdowns and the knockout. I thought he was getting the better of Charlo. He had Charlo complaining, Charlo crying. Why are you always crying? He had him crying to the ref. But he low, he hitting low, ref, he hitting low, ref. And um, this dude trying to creep around. <laughs> I thought, you know, no, no, Jamil Charlo, all right, little Charlo. Um, um, you know, what was so tough about Rosario? <laughs> we interviewed Jamil Charlo, Lil Charlo. But um but yeah, on a serious note, uh yeah, he was getting, you know, Charlo just get by, Jamil get by with Derrick James cuz he got a good jaw. You know, he got some he's a great athlete. He winds up on every punch he loads up. He's just such a great athlete and there's a lack of uh there's a lack of of skill at 154. Everybody at 54 got a hole in their game. You know, Lubin can't take it on the chops. Harrison Got stamina gain issues and can't take it on the chops. J-Rock can't take it on the chops. You know what I'm saying? You keep going on and on and on. Jer Hurd can't, he ain't got no defense. So, you know, this is a division where everybody is right there at the same level. Jamel, Jamel is just as, is, is just as, uh, he, most anybody at that division is just as skilled as he is. The difference is he just got a better, he got the better intangible, he got the better intangibles and he got the jaw. He got the heart, he got the will, he got the determination, you know, and he got the speed, the athleticism, the power. He got enough power. He ain't a puncher. If he was a puncher, the difference is Rosario is a natural puncher. Rosario can just let his shots fly and he was just hurting Charlo. That's why Charlo was moving and stumbling. Charlo got to load up to get power. He ain't nobody taught him how to punch. 
You know, Derrick James kind of taught him how to punch, but didn't teach him how to punch. I think there's a disconnect between his training and him teaching. Charlo got to load up, and if he if he was in the right division doing that, somebody would tap that ass. That's just the God honest truth. He just in the right division at the right time. You know, that's it. That's it. He in the right division at the right time. And that and that's the huge difference. But you know, it's only two guys that I want to see him fight at that division. You know what I'm saying? I want to see him fight. Costanos, if he get the WBO belt, if Teixeira get it, he going to beat Teixeira. I think Costanos and Tony Harrison are probably the only guys that can give him some issues at the weight. Um, Harrison is one of those dudes that he just like everybody else at 54. Some of them can box, some of them can bang, but he got the stamina, he got the chin. That's it. J-Rock can't beat Jamil Charlo. He, his defense not good enough, and he don't have enough power. He going to sleep. It's just a matter of time. His best thing to do is try to push Charlo in the back foot and try to grind him down, but he's not strong enough. Uh, Rosario had a great chance. He just can't take it on the chops. So, you know, Charlo's just in, Jamil is just in the right division. You know, Dervachenko coming back down. Could Dervachenko do something to him? He can take a shot, but can he take a shot at 54? That's a guy that fought at 68, 60, 68. Now he's going down to 60, 54. I mean, it's a question, but I think Castanos for Undisputed or, or Jashara Winder, I think he beat Jashara, um, but... I think it's Thanos and Tony Harrison, the two guys the weight that can beat him. And what's so funny about it, a lot of people think Terrence Bud Crawford can move up and beat him. The question is, you got a guy moving up that's got to put on 10-ounce gloves from 8-ounce gloves. Um, can he take the power? You know, people say, well, Gamboa hurt him, and that guy hurt him, and this, that, and the third. Can he take the power? That's the question. We've seen him spar dominance with interchangeable star partners. That's it. People say, well, he, 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 got, he got a chin issue. Man, chin issue is a mere kind where... You wobbling, you get knocked out constantly. It, it happens. You know, Joe Frazier knocked down Muhammad Ali. You got a lot of Jerron Ennis uh, coach um, and, or manager in there talking about, well, you know, he's too big for Crawford. Like, dude, with Ennis, dude, like, you got to pick a promoter. You know, you got people in Philly that's behind him. great fighter. And I have no issue with him. But we all know you can't take pressure. We've seen in the amateurs with Gary Anton Russell. You can't take the pressure. So this the pros. Ain't, ain't shit going to change with pressure. So he got a lot to learn and a lot to show. But, you know, we'll see what's going on with that. But I'll if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm Bud, if he do get all four belts, maybe I'll move up and fight him. You know, if I can't get Earl Spence, I, I doubt if they won't give him Earl, they give him Terrence. But for, for Jamel Charlo, there's only two big fights out there for him. You know what I mean? I mean, and it's two big fights out there for him. And y'all are probably not going to guess him. Is Crawford out there for him? You know, uh, if Crawford can take the power, maybe or maybe not. His defense got to be on point. But Charlo is beatable. I think Floyd would have told Charlo up. This is my opinion. But he's beatable. But, you know, he just got great jaw. You just really got to score on him all night. And also got to have the stamina. And Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar want to come back. Him and him and him and him and Mill do a lot of a lot of pay-per-views. Well, Floyd let Mill fight Oscar De La Hoya. It's a million dollar question. You know, so that's the question. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you got business question, cry, response, your video quest. Keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation to the channel? Cash up. PayPal is in the description. Um, so check that out. Cash up at CJ Good313. So, so, so little Charlo, how, how was your fight with Rosario? <laughs> but I appreciate y'all. Keep sharing the videos. And once again, we on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All those links in the description. You need to reach out for business question, cry, response, your video quest. Come here, boy. Here y'all boy go. Uh-uh, don't -uh, no, knock over the, the camera. Come on. There you go. Here you go. Here y'all big boy go. This big Charlo. This big Charlo. This big Charlo. Y'all boy, y'all be asking. His eye doing better. He won't turn around. See? Cleared up. So, appreciate y'all for tapping in. You better not lay no, fat, no wet one on me. Appreciate y'all for tapping in. Let's keep sharing the videos. One time for the one time.